Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I'm going to show you how to build a health bar system that dynamically adds health bars to your characters in a slightly different way than I did in the previous video. So if you saw the last video, we built world space UI elements that hover over the character's head. In this one, we're going to place those things kind of on the screen and have them dynamically follow the character around. And they're also not going to be children of the character. They're actually going to be just on a canvas off of the root level in our game hierarchy. By the way, um, if you're watching this live, I have a giveaway linked down below giving away a Rift and a copy of my course. It ends in just a couple of days, so make sure you sign up for that before it's too late. All right, so let's get started. First, I want to show what this system looks like. So if I hit play, we should see a health bar appear over my little orc as he walks around in a circle. And I'm going to duplicate my orc and just give him a little slower speed so they kind of split up. And you'll see that we now have another orc with another health bar. And I'll duplicate that guy again and just crank it up. And you can see, again, we got another guy with another health bar. And if I disable this guy, the health bar goes away. Now you may have noticed in this little hierarchy here under the canvas, some health bars appearing and disappearing. Watch as I dis disable this other guy. Here, disable that one. We should see the other health bar just kind of disappear. And we've got this one health bar left active. We also have this inactive one. This is actually just a copy of my prefab that I've been playing with and using to work and just dropping it back and forth. Since we don't quite have the new prefab workflow, this is a great way to do it. So let's stop playing and take a look at the system, see how it all works. So the first thing I want to show is just the orc because we're showing the health for the orc and understanding how the orc works I think is pretty important. First we have this walk in circle script. If you saw the previous video, you know that this just moves them forward and rotates them. It's just there so that we can demonstrate. And then we have the health script. And these are the only two scripts on this guy. There's an animator, so he plays the walking animation. This moves him and then this handles the health. So here, and this is probably one of the most important parts, we have two static events that pass in a health. We have an on health added and an on health removed. And the way that the system works is whenever we create a new NPC or entity or enemy, whatever it is, a thing with health on it, we call this event so that things that need to know that a new thing with health appeared will know. In this case, it'll be our health bar controller. You may see the file right there. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. But first, let's finish looking at this class. So we have these two events. We have a max health and a current health. Current health can only be set privately, but it can be read publicly. So we have a public getter and a private setter. And then we have another event. This one, however, is not static. So notice this is just public event. These are public static events. So this event is for whenever this health changes. These events are for when any health is added or removed. So whenever this health changes, this event gets fired off. Then in on enable, we set our current health to max health. That's just kind of resetting the health. And then we call on health added and we pass in this. If you look at on disable, we call on health removed and pass in this. So hopefully you're getting an idea of what's happening there. Before we look closer at that though, let's just finish up with modify health and update. So in our update method, we look to see if I press space. If we do, the health goes down by 10. And then if, uh, or I guess when that happens, we call modify health. We change the health by that amount, negative 10. So plus negative 10 just subtracts 10. We figure out the current health percent just by dividing the current health by the max health. We cast as a float, so we get a float result back instead of dividing by an int and getting an integer back which would be zero or one. We want a value between zero and one to represent the percent. Zero, zero percent, one is a hundred percent. And then we call on health percent changed. Great, so that's the health. Now let's look at the health bar controller and see how that works, how this all kind of ties together and creates a health bar and then follows the character around. First, I'm gonna go back to the project and just look at the canvas right here and notice that we have a health bar controller on it and we have a reference to a health bar prefab. If I click on that, you'll see that this is actually in my prefabs folder. We also have this health bar under here. And like I mentioned earlier, what I do is generally is work on it. I'll enable it, make some changes, hit apply, and then just disable it. That way I just keep it in my hierarchy just to keep working with. And we probably clean that out eventually, but you know, while I'm doing development, it's a whole lot faster than just dropping it back and forth in there. So let's see, let's look at this health bar just has a health bar, a foreground, and an update speed and a position offset. 
And then the health bar controller again just had that script in the prefab. Okay, let's take a look at the, the controller now. So here's that health bar prefab, which just references to our health bar prefab. And then we have a dictionary of health as the key and health bar as the value. So this will let us look things up by the health and find the relevant health bar. It also let us know if we've already added a health bar, if we have a health bar for a specific thing. So in awake, we call added, and we register it to the add health bar method. So this is registering that static event. And I wanna go back to that event, just hit F12 here. And remember, because these are static, the static keyword right here means that we're not using a instance of the health, we're actually doing this on the health class. So this is just generic, it's not, um, it's not tied to a specific instance. Okay, so we register for on health added with add health bar and on health removed with remove health bar. So when a health bar is added, which happens again, let's just one more time, or when a health is added, not a health bar, which again is in on enable, remember we call on health added. So this is gonna fire back into here. We look at our dictionary and we see if it contains this health already. If we haven't added it yet, it's not there. So it's just gonna return false and this code will run. Then we instantiate a new health bar. We say var health bar equals instantiate and we give it the prefab and then we give it the transform of this controller so that it will be a child. That's actually, uh, let's see, which overload is that? That's number two, original object or the prefab and then the transform parent. Once we have that health bar created, we add it to our dictionary and we use health, which is the you know, source health object as the key. And then we pass the health bar as the value. So now when we look up this health, we should be able to find the relevant health bar. And then we finally call health bar .set health and we pass in that health object. So we're instantiating the health and then passing in the health object in set health. Let's take a look at what that does. It's really just keeping track of that variable. So set health, we pass in that health, and it just says this dot health equals health. And we use the this keyword just because the variables are named the same. It's named health here, and it's named health on our private variable here. Because the names match, we've got to put the this dot just to make it obvious to the compiler and to people reading the code what's going on. And then finally, we register for that on health percent changed. So now we've gone through that whole process of creating a health bar and registering for the health changed event. And then in the health changed event, we kick off a coroutine which changes our health percent. And I covered this a lot in the last video. If you really wanna know exactly how this works, I highly recommend you just take a quick look over there, go into detail about how the LERP works and how this whole thing works. It's essentially just to make the health bar kind of slowly slide down or kind of do a quick warp instead of an instant pop down to the amount. Now, um, while we're in the health bar, let's just finish it up and look at late update. So in late update, what we do is set the position of the health bar. Remember, this is a 2D UI element. Let's just take a look here. That's one of these. In fact, I'm gonna hit play. We'll get a health bar on there and let's watch it move around. So we select this is the health bar for this guy's health object. And you can see the position moving around up and down. You also notice the position offset is two. If I drag that down, notice that it goes down. If I put it at zero, you see it's basically at his feet. Two is two meters above him. It's usually about a good number for an average size humanoid. You may want to, by the way, make this a little bit more dynamic and have it detect the height of the character and be the height plus some amount. But um, right here, we're just going with the two to keep it relatively simple since it's really about the health bars. Now let's go back into the code. So what do we do here? We're setting that position by calling camera.main.world to screen point. What this is doing is taking our main camera and converting the world point there to a point on that camera, a screen point on that camera. So that way we know where this health bar goes to represent something that's over that spot. And then I don't just give it the health transform position. I also add in vector three dot up times that position offset. So we're getting the position and then basically adding two on the Y and that's the world space position that we're adding it to. It's important to make sure that you do that in here, not outside, otherwise you're way off. It's not gonna match at all. So here we get that position that's two meters above, convert it to a screen point and set the position. As simple as that. Now, it, of course, 
if you're doing this in a real project, don't just use camera.main. It's relatively slow, not, not something that you want to do. You want to cache your camera. Camera.main does a tag lookup and again, don't want to do that normally, but in a sample like this, it's not a big deal. We're not worried about performance here and it's not going to be a performance issue here. All right, so let's go back to the health bar controller. The last part in here is, notice, remember we registered this health removed and we have remove health bar. And here, when we remove it, we check to make sure that it actually is in our dictionary, just in case this gets called erroneously. We wanna make sure that we're not doing something stupid and throwing exceptions. So if we try to remove the health bar, if it's in this dictionary, first thing we do is destroy the game object of the health bar. We wanna make sure that that health bar is destroyed and gone, and then we remove it from the dictionary. Simple as that. Now again, make sure that you do the game object here and not the health bar, otherwise you're just gonna have a health bar floating out there that no longer has a script on it, it isn't moving around and it's just bugged out. So don't do that, make sure that you get the game object. Okay, so let's see, if we go into health, I think we've covered all of that, we've covered all of the health bar. And I think that's pretty much it. The only thing I haven't really talked about, but again, I talked about a lot in the other one, was this health bar object itself. So we have the health bar. It's important to note that it does have a canvas on there, and that's so that uh, it can update independently of other objects. So when I hit space on it, it's not updating other UI elements if we had other UI elements that were outside this canvas. Generally, when I have a canvas like per thing that's changing often, so that everything else doesn't have to change with it or have to update when that thing changes. So here, to finish it off, let's just duplicate this rider, speed him up, just, oh, that, that might have been too much, and hit some damage and hurt them both and watch them drop independently. All right, I hope this is somewhat helpful. Again, this is just one of a couple ways that you can create health bars. I think you can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, I've used this system and the previous one in multiple games just depending on how you want these things to look how you want them to act so pick the one that works best for your game and go for it if you have questions though uh, drop them in a comment below i try to answer them other people also are pretty good at answering thanks for that by the way anybody that goes through and answers questions down there and don't forget to like subscribe share um all that stuff also i just want to say a special thanks to all the people on patreon who are supporting the channel it's really awesome Really appreciate it. And our next meetup is going to be happening pretty soon. So if you're interested in that, just hop onto Patreon, join up, and you get all the information about that. All right, thanks again. Have a great day. Keep coding.